Welcome to Blue Talks. here have ever heard of laughter yoga oh okay excellent I'm in the right place and today is your lucky day if you haven't heard of laughter yoga I get to be the one to introduce it to all of you I'm so grateful for the opportunity that laughter yoga has given me it came at the right moment of my life in the middle of the pandemic because it was a very isolating time and to be disconnected from everyone. And when I was introduced to laughter yoga, it allowed me to connect with many heart-centered people and to learn the techniques and tools that would get me through that period of isolation and lockdown. Through training and the certification that led me to become a laughter yoga leader, I've learned so many techniques that have improved my relationships and my business. So more on that later as I share with you the powerful health benefits of laughter yoga. But firstly, I want to introduce to you how I have shared laughter yoga with a group of kids at the Jacksonville Botanical Gardens. You see, I volunteer with a nonprofit organization called Harmony Mind, Body, Spirit and Wellness. We meet pretty regularly on every Sunday, and that is when I gather a group of children, ages five to 10 years old, and introduce to them laughter yoga exercises. And so I'm always on the lookout for some fresh ideas, games, uh, props that I can help me to relate to the kids. So here I am, it's the week before Valentine's Day, and I wanted to do something really special for these kids. So I decided to go shopping at Walmart. So picture this, I'm strolling down the aisle, I'm pushing my cart, and I'm browsing the shelves. I'm singing the song that's in my head. Do I diddy diddy dum diddy do? Do I diddy diddy dum diddy do? And there, right before my eyes, I see this fantastic, colorful display of heart-shaped glasses. Ta-da! How clever is this? Valentine, you are spectacular. Spectacles, spectacular, get it? Yep. <laughs> I quickly grabbed as many as I could off the shelf. I was so excited because this was the perfect prop that I could relate to with the kids and perhaps even show them how they can start to see the world through loving eyes and perhaps to see a little bit of themselves with loving and tender self-care. I was so excited to arrive at the park that day and I eagerly pass each of these cards out to those children. And I smiled at them as I handed them out. They were so delighted to have this in their hands and they immediately put on their heart-shaped glasses. And the activity that day, we practiced reciting out loud, I am affirmation statements as they wore these heart-shaped glasses. It was a spectacular day all around. So over time, I've come to discover that they make adult size heart shaped glasses because these are a little too small <laughs> to fit my face. And I love the adult size glasses because they have this exaggerated heart frame. And I've collected quite a few pairs myself in every color to match my outfits 
and also to match my every mood. Ta-da! <laughs> Aren't they fabulous? <laughs> so, do you recognize the street peddlers that walk down New York City and they're, you know, wearing that long trench coat and they flash you whatever they're selling, like watches or sunglasses? Well, look at me. I've got something even better. And they're heart-shaped glasses. I'm so thrilled to be here with you today at Harvard. And it's great to be back at Harvard where I was once a student taking professional development education classes, continuing education classes. But I have to admit, as excited as I am, I am feeling a little bit naked right now. <laughs> so let me put on my glasses. <laughs> How do I look? <laughs> We're at Blue Talks after all. <laughs> so I love this color blue because it represents communication and training and coaching, of which I do a lot in my business, pertaining to LinkedIn social media, online collaborations, and producing live streaming events and promotions. You may have heard the expression that some people wear their heart on their sleeves. And I have chosen to adopt this mantra where I'm wearing my heart on my face. And I love this illustration of this cartoon because it really does come down to choice. I choose to see the good in everyone and in everything. And this mantra has served me well when I have been faced with disappointment and despair. And this color blue also comes to represent when I'm in a blue mood. When so much of my persona is keeping up with this digital image and being involved in social media, there are times when I don't want to be online. And I can recall early on in my business when I decided to take a three month digital detox. It sounds a little extreme, three months is a long time, but it was so necessary. I needed that time away of reacting and responding to client requests and demands and really just take that time to be within, to nurture my mind and recalibrate my inner world. And I had to sit with some really uncomfortable emotions. You see, I had played this corporate career my entire life and there's a pull. I felt this desire, this urge to do more than what was expected of me in my job. I just knew that coming from the pandemic, there had to be more meaning than this. So I, that desire caught up to me and I questioned and I doubted myself, is this even viable? Can I create a business? Can I be an entrepreneur? And this period of reinvention led me to that moment of digital detox because I had to feel all the feelings, the, the anguish and the fear, the vulnerability and overwhelm of it all. All these emotions I was taught to suppress to keep on a happy face. And so the digital detox required deleting all the apps from my phone as well as just shutting down the computer, refusing to log into Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, you name it. I needed that time away. And I needed that time to reflect and journal, to meditate. And perhaps these glasses were a reminder to extend that compassion to myself. From this digital detox, I learned many lessons, one of which was to set proper boundaries and have a routine for my self-care. And also to make sure there's an alignment of expectations when I work with clients. When I first started in business, I did a lot of bartering and trade for services. And that caught up to me as well too. So I had to learn to set boundaries. Another area that requires boundaries is live streaming. 
I love the concept of live streaming. I mean, the fact that we have access to this technology and tools uh, to go live and broadcast anywhere and anytime, it's very exciting to be able to interview people, build community, drive engagement. However, when you're live, anything can happen. <laughs> So what do you do? What do you do when there's audio feedback and low internet bandwidth and low video quality or the guest suddenly drops off from the screen? That is when I have to pull out these glasses. These are my very special customized red sparkly glasses. I love these glasses because they allow me to be bold and to step into a new persona and it helps me to reframe technical difficulties. The word, the phrase technical difficulties does not sit right with me. But it sounds so harsh and abrupt and it has a way of making you feel stuck. So I've learned now to say instead of technical difficulties, we're experiencing a mojo overload. And is it any wonder when you've got amazing guests and audience participation that there be this very high level of energy and vibration and frequency? No wonder there's a mojo overload. Forget 5G, this is 10G now. <laughs> and there are times when I flash this slide in the middle of a live segment to say, please stand by for a mojo reboot. So during a Mojo reboot, I may do something like this. I bring up my Wi-Fi antenna, and I start wiggling my fingers around to summon the internet and give it a boost. <laughs> By doing this, it allows the people around me to pause, smile, and breathe. That simple, silly gesture has done wonders to diffuse many stressful situations. Outside of live streaming, when you are faced with a difficulty, whether you're feeling frazzled or stressed out, I would love to have you consider another simple, silly gesture, and that is to touch your finger to your nose. <laughs> Come on, do it with me. Touch your finger to your nose. Yes. <laughs> we take ourselves way too seriously sometimes, don't we? <laughs> do this for one minute and see how you feel. <laughs> They say that laughter is the best medicine and it's right under your nose. So another way to reframe this, to laugh on cue, to laugh on purpose, is to have a reset button. So your reset button could be this, or it could be this. It could also be this. So whatever you choose to have as your reset button, practice that, hold that anchor. Perhaps you just close your eyes for a moment and breathe. Perhaps you just smile to yourself, get those smile muscles activated. And perhaps you just activate your own laughter sounds. Ha ha, ho ho, hee hee. You see, here's the thing. When we wait for those perfect moments to laugh according to a stimulus or response to a comedy or a funny movie, those moments may come few and far in between. So choose laughter. Make laughter a choice rather than leave it up to chance. So at the end of a very successful live streaming event, I then get to change into my favorite pair of glasses, these bright yellow ones. This is my favorite because it's yellow. It showcases my sunny, optimistic side of my personality. It's a reminder to embrace my inner child. 
and to play and have fun. So let's have some fun. So I want to share with you another retail story. So here I am shopping and I'm at Home Depot this time. Have you ever stopped at Home Depot and paused by their paint wall? I walked in and I was just so mesmerized by the array of colors. And more fascinating is the name or the label that they give for each color. So there's two that caught my eye. One is funny face and the other is smiley face. <laughs> I couldn't believe my good luck. I had yet again stumbled upon another fantastic prop that I could share with my kids at the park. So I grabbed a couple of these, I grabbed a couple of handfuls, and I bring them to the park and I say, hey, draw me your version of a smiley face. What is a funny face to you? Perhaps draw a self-portrait. The kids love it. They get out their crayons and paint and markers, and they get to create their version of a funny face or a smiley face. And they take it home, and I remind them, keep this in your bookmark when you're doing homework. Put it on your bedside table, put it in the mirror. Wherever you feel like you need a reminder to pause and laugh. So I've handed out a few of these yellow smiley faces for you because I'd love for you to sit and maybe later on draw your version of a smiley face. And research has shown that when you stare at bright colors such as this one, it has a way of enhancing your mood and boosting positivity. You see, laughter yoga has changed and impacted my business in so many ways. When I work with clients who are lacking confidence on camera and I can sense their trepidation, apprehension about being on live, I have found a way to introduce playful laughter exercises to put them at ease, to help them feel relaxed so they can have a good time and be their true authentic selves. And wellness is such an important skill. It's a learned skill. The ability to learn and nurture self-care practices, whatever it is for you. It could be meditation, exercise, journaling, perhaps laughter yoga. It has a way of helping you to lead a happier life. And also, choosing to laugh when there's nothing funny is a very important skill for resilience as well too. Because what you want to do is activate your laughter sounds. Laugh on cue. Laugh on purpose. It starts with smiling, then making those laughter sounds. Ha ha, ho ho, hee hee. Laughter is the best present because it keeps you here in this present moment. And you suddenly begin to breathe, get oxygen to your brain and be more open to creativity and problem solving. You experience this greater ability to adapt and find coping strategies in stressful moments. Laughter has a way of releasing those feel good uh, endorphins for your well being and gives you that dopamine hit. There are so many benefits to laughter yoga, and there's so many more exercises that I wish I could share with you today. So stay tuned because there will be a free gift for a laughter yoga meditation. And so I'd like to leave with you this quote from the lovely Audrey Hepburn. So Audrey will say this. For beautiful eyes, look for the good in others. For beautiful lips, speak only the words of kindness. And for poise, walk with the knowledge that you are never alone. 